a continuous land on variable x has a pdf given by f of x is equals to x over 2 and x lies between 0 and 2. And the first one is we want to find the probability of x greater than a half which will be basically the integral from a half to 2 of f of x dx which is the integral of 1 over 2 to 2 x over 2 dx and x squared over 4 and uh, is 0 0.5 to 2 and this will be 4 over 4 minus 0 0.25 over 4 and this is 1 over 1 over 16 as the value and that will be 16 minus 1 over 16 is equals to 15 over 16. Probability x is less than or equals to 1. It will basically be from 0 to 1. Why from 0 to 1? Remember the value of x lies between 0 and 2. And so if it's less than 1, it will be between 0 and 1. x over 2 dx, which is x squared over 4. And then 0 to 1 will be equals to a quarter. And that will be the solution. So you have to keep in mind the limits of a of integration or the values for which x is still valid. Probability x is greater than 2. It will be the integral from 2 to infinity x over 2 dx and this is 0. Why? Because x lies between 2 and 0. Any value below 0 and any value above 0 f of x will be equals to 0. So that's why we can automatically indicate that to be equals to 0. Probability of x greater than or equals to 1. So it will be the integral from 1 to 2 x over 2 dx. And this will be equals to x squared over 4, 1 to 2 will be 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 and that will be 3 over 4. We want to consider a univalid uh, land of variable and uh, we're going to look at both continuous and discrete cases. We let x to have a probability density function given by f of x is equals to e raised to negative x, x is greater than uh, or equals to 0, and then when it's 0, when x is less than 0. We want to show that So we show that f of x is a PDF and basically it means we want to integrate from 0 to infinity of e minus x dx and uh, from our integral calculus that is what we get e raised to power 0 minus e raised to power negative infinity which is 1 minus 1 over e raised to power infinity and is equals to 1. So we know that uh, for f of x to be a PDF from uh, the laws that we have given, we have to get this to from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx should be equals to 1. So if this condition is satisfied, then it shows that f of x is a PDF. Uh, x uh, lies between, for example, 1 and 2. So basically we are going to integrate from 1 to 2 e less to negative x dx and therefore that is negative e less to negative x 1 and 2 and that's the interval of uh, integration that's a definite integral and if we substitute that it will be negative e negative 2 
minus minus e negative 1. So it is e to power negative 1 minus e to power negative 2. Let x have a probability mass function. And we use the probability mass function when our f of x is a discrete case or it is discrete. So a quarter when x is 0, another quarter when x is 1, and then it could be a half when x is 2, and then 0 other elsewhere. We use the word 0 elsewhere or 0 otherwise. So what it, does it mean? It means that if the value of x, so in this case our values of x are 0, 1, 2, and this is a very good case of uh, discrete. They are discrete because they are countable. And so if they are countable, we have a probability mass function for f of x. We want to show that f of x is a PMF. So basically we are going to sum uh, k from 0 to 2. Probability of x is equals to xk. So is equals to probability x is equals to x0 plus probability of x is x1 plus probability of x is equals to x2. So in other terms, this is like our x0. This is our, our x0, x1, and x2. And those are the three values we have. So we just sum their probabilities. And that will give show to us. So it's a quarter plus a quarter plus a half, which is one. Similar to what we found in the case of a, of a PDF. Example is to find probability x is equals to one, and that one will be a quarter. But if we are told to find probability x is equals to three, this will be a zero. And the reason behind is that we are told that uh, it is f of x is equal to 0 elsewhere. Where is elsewhere? Elsewhere is when the values of x are maybe something like 3, 4, 5, and so on. Or they are negative infinity all the way up to negative 1. So if the values of x lie from negative infinity to negative 1, or there are 3 from 3 all the way to infinity, then the f of x will always be equals to 0. And that's what uh, the, that PMF is uh, telling us about our value. So that our random variable x as a PDF given by f of x is equals to kx. Remember, k is a constant. So... Uh, that constant, we can be able to get it. And how do we get the constant? We use the principles that we know. And what principles do we know? We know that from 0 to 1, kx dx should be equals to 1. So we want to show this to be true. And that means then technically, if I integrate that, I'll get kx squared over 2, 0 to 1 is equals to 1. So if I replace, I'll get k times a half minus zero is equals to one, and that implies that k is equals to two. So that's the value of k. k is equals to two in that case. Probability density function, which is given by two x, and x lies between zero and one, and it's zero elsewhere. So if you have been asked to get a constant, you would go about that. There are other things you could do. We could get the probability that uh, x is greater than or equals to a half. Remember, you have been given the interval between 0 and 1. And this is the interval that we know the value of f of x. Anything beyond that on this end, on this end, your f of x will equals be 0. So, if I say x is greater than a half, you have to be careful. Your half is somewhere here. 
So the only place that is valid is this. So it will be the integral from a half to 1 to x dx, which is uh, 2 times x squared over 2, a half and 1, which is x squared, a half and 1. So that's what we'll get. And then now we substitute the values. And the values will be equals to 1 squared minus a half squared, which is 1 minus a quarter, which is 3 over 4. We want to note that uh, the value or the probability of x will always lie between 0 and 1. The probability of x will always lie between 0 and 1. A random variable x has a probability mass function and uh, will give f of x is equals to k over 2, 2x two plus 1, and x lies between, or x is 1, 2, 3. So the first thing is to find the constant k. So it will be summation of x from 1, 2, 3, I'll put k over 2 outside, 2x plus 1, and the sum of that should be equals to 1. I put when x is 1, it will be 2 plus 1. When x is 2, it is 4 plus 1. And when x is 3, it is 6 plus 1. And that will be equals to 1. So you multiply with x, this is 3 plus 5 plus 7. And uh, all this gives me 15. So 15 over 2k is equals to 1. And that implies that k is equals to 2 over 15. So for I can write down my PMF as 2 over 15 times a half 2x plus 1, which is 1 over 15. 2x plus 1 and x is 1, 2, 3. And I can comfortably say 0 otherwise. So that utility x is equals to 1. And basically what it means it is 1 over 15. Then 2 times 1 plus 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So it is 3 over 15 which is 1 over 5. And uh, we want to consider some examples. You have been given the PDF below that uh, f of x is equals to x over 2 and x lies between 0 and 2. So now the question is how do we get the expected value when you have given a continuous uh, uh, probability density function and therefore the first part is to get the expected of x and by definition the expected value of x is given by from negative infinity to infinity you introduce x f of x dx and therefore this will give us from 0 to 2 x times x over 2 dx a half x cubed over 3 and the limits of integration is 0 to 2, which will be a half times 8 over 3. And this gives me 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3. And that is the expected value. Now for us to be able to get the variance of x, the variance of x is given by expected of x squared minus expected of x, everything squared. We've already been able to single out the expected of x. So now what we want to do is we want to get the expected of x squared, which is the same as above. This time we introduce the squared and x over 2 dx. And the integral of that will be a half x to power 4 over 4 and the limits of integration is 0 to 2. With a half times 2 to power 4 over 4. 
which is uh, 16 divided by 8, which is 2. Therefore, we can comfortably get the variance of x, which will be 2 minus 4 over 3 squared, which is a LCM of 9. 9 because this gives us 16 over 9. And therefore, we can comfortably say the LCM is 9. So 18 minus 16, 2 over 9. We are given the probability mass, mass function and we want to get the expected value of x. Expected value of x again will be the 1 over 15 summation x is equals to 1, 2, 3, x times 2x plus 1. And therefore, if we substitute the values, it's 1 times 2x plus 1, our x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, then plus 2, then our 2 is 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and then plus 3, 3, and 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and that gives us 3, plus 10, plus 21, which is equals to 34. And then, remember, it is 34, then times 1 over 15, which is 34 over 15. We had not used the value outside, so it is 34 over 15. Expected of x squared will be equal to 1 over 15. Again, summation of x is equal to 1, 2, 3, x squared, 2x plus 1, which will be equal to, when x is 1, it will be 1 squared. It will be 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3, then plus 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and then plus 3 squared. Then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is equals to 7. And uh, we still have the 1 over 15 uh, that we're going to include in the solution. So this will be 3 plus 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20. 3 squared is 9 times C, 7 is 63. And uh, that gives me 86. And then times 1 over 15, which is 86 over 15. And so we can be able to compute the variance of x, which is expected of x squared minus expected of x over 15, everything squared. We note that 34 over 15 squared is 1156 over 225. The LCM is 225. Therefore, we have 1290 minus 1156. And if you subtract that, you get 134 over 225. And that gives us the solution to the variance of uh, that uh, PMF that you have been given. For the discrete case, the expected of x is given by summation of x times the probability of x and expected of x squared is given by summation of x squared times probability of x. For the continuous case, the expected of x is given the integral of x f of x dx and we have been given the probability distribution of a random variable x and this shows that this is a discrete case. Why do we say that it's a discrete case? Because the values of x are countable. And therefore, we want to find A, expected of x, and B, the variance of x. So in the first case, expected of x will be given by summation of x times P of x. And we know the values of x are 0, 2, 4, and 6, and the respective probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. Therefore, it will be 0 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.3 plus 4 times 0 0.2 plus 6 times 0 0.3, which will be equal to 0 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.8 plus 1.8 and this gives us 
So that is the expected value of x, 3.2. The next step is to get the variance of x. And for us to get the variance of x, we need first of all to get the formula, which is given by expected of x squared minus expected of x everything squared. We already have this part. So what we need now to get is the expected of x squared. And this is given by summation of x squared times p of x. Note that we are squaring the x and not the probability. First value of x is 0 squared times 0 0.2. The next value is 2 squared times 0 0.3. The third value is 4 squared times 0 0.2 and the last value is 6 squared times 0 0.3. And this will give us 0, that is 4 times 0 0.3 is 1.2, 16. This will give us 3.2 and this is that 6 times 3 which is 108 which is 10.8. And the sum of this is 14, 15.2. And therefore, the variance of x is 15.2 minus the expected of x squared, which is 3.2, which is 15.2 minus 10.24. And this will give me a variance of 4.96. And definitely with the variance, I can get the standard deviation. We know that the standard deviation of, uh, standard deviation of x is the square root of the variance of x, which is the square root of 4.96 as the value there, and this will give me 2.23. So I can be able to calculate the expected, the variance, or even the standard deviation for a discrete case. Given f of x is equal to 2x, x lies between 0 and 1, and 0 elsewhere, we want to go through the same exercise. We want to find expected of x and the variance of x. For a continuous case where we are dealing with integration, we find that expected of x will be the integral from 0 to 1 x times f of x dx. So it will be 0 to 1 x times 2 x dx. And we know that this is 2 x squared. And the integral of that will be 2 x cubed over 3, 0 and 1. And the answer will be 2 over 3 as the expected value of x. Based on that, we can get the variance of x, and remember that the variance of x is given by expected of x squared minus expected of x, everything squared. Therefore, expected of x squared will be the integral from 0 to 1 x squared times 2x dx, which is the integral of 0 to 1 x cubed dx. And that will be equals to 2x raised to power 4 over 4, 0 and 1 again. And if we substitute that, the answer will be equals to 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2. So therefore, the variance of x is equals to 1 over 2 minus 2 over 3 squared, which is the LCM of 9. Uh, let me say 18. So it will be 9 minus 8, which is equals to 1 over 18. Another example, when you roll a die, you'll get paid $2 for an odd number and $3 for even number. Find the expected value of the money you get for one roll of the dice. So we can think about rolling the dice. You, you have the die as six size and the probability is the same of getting either of the six numbers because it's assumed not to be uh, biased. 
and the amount that you get for for each it will be alternating between two and three the even numbers you get three for odd numbers you get two so you are told to find the expected of x and remember it is summation of x times p of x and this is our x values this is the money that you receive so it's basically 2 times 1 over 6 plus that so it will be 2 times 1 over 6 plus 3 times 1 over 6 plus 2 times 1 over 6 plus 3 times 1 over 6 plus 2 over 1 over 6 plus 3 over 1 over 6 and uh, this is the same as 1 over 6 that is 2 plus 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, which is 15 over 6. And by 3 is 5, by 3 is 2, so you get $2.5 for each of the. So we can see that on average, you get $2.5. A lot of the dice so basically that's how you'd go about getting the expected value uh, when you are dealing uh, with uh, a discrete case also like in this example and uh, what we are talking about is the PDF versus the CDF A continuous random variable x as a PDF that is given by f of x is equals to a quarter when x lies between 2 and negative 2 and uh, it's 0 elsewhere. And we want to see how we can compute the CDF. want to find the CDF which is given by capital F of X. And therefore, the CDF, which is equals to the F of X, is the integral of F of X from 0 to X, a quarter dx. And therefore, this is a quarter of X. Therefore, we can comfortably say that our F of X is equals to 0 when x is less than negative 2 it's x over 4 when x lies between 0 and 2 and it is 1 when x is greater than 2 and the probability that x lies between 2 and negative 2 it will be f of 2 minus f of negative 2 and therefore it will be x 2 over 4 minus minus 2 over 4 is equals to 1. In most cases, if I was to get the probability of x maybe lying between 0 and uh, 2, what I would do is I would do the integral from 0 to 2 a quarter dx, which is x over 4, 0 and 2, and the answer would be a half. That one I could do. That is, I use the f of x. Now, I could do the same, but this time I use the cumulative. And how do I go about using the cumulative? I will say it is f of 2 minus f of 0. So it will be 2 over 4 minus 0 over 4. And that gives me 2 over 4 is 1 over 2. So I can use the cumulative distribution function to get probabilities if I know the cumulative distribution function. Or I can use the probability density function to be able to do the same. And they normally work together and makes it very easy for us to, to get the solution. Then the f of x is given by the first derivative of f of x which is the d dx of 1 over 4 over x, which is a quarter. Now, the question would be, how would I know the intervals for the f of x 
if I wasn't too sure. If I wanted to know the intervals for x, one of the things I would do is to test this. Because there are certain values, and I already had an idea from the beginning, so this time I would test from negative 2 to 2 dx, and the answer should be equals to 1. If this is true, then this would be an f of x. And I know this is a quarter x. If I say from negative 2 to 2 in this case, then you realize that this will be 2 over 4 minus minus 2 over 4. And that will give me 4 over 4 is equals to 1. So I would know what are the intervals for the f of x. f of x is straightforward because the integral from the lower limit to the upper limit of f of x dx should always be equals to 1. Now, in situations where we are given the discrete case, the PMF, we want to look at an example. Variable x as a PMF, that is probability mass function, uh, given by f of x is equals to 1 over 15, 2x plus 1. We can be able to write the f of x in full, x and, the, and the, it's a compatriot. So when x is 1, so it will be 3 over 15. When x is 2, it will be 5 over 15. And when x is 3, it will be 7 over 15. One thing you'll note that 3 plus 5 plus 7 over 15 will give you 1. And that proves to us that the f of x is a probability mass function. Now let's get the CDF. The cumulative to find the CDF. So we could write the same. So in this case, what we have is we have x and then the f of x, the capital. So it's called cumulative. So 1, 2, and 3. The first one is 3 over 15. The second one is 8 over 15. What is 8 over 15? 3 over 15 plus 5 over 15 is 8 over 15. And then 8 plus 7, and that is 15 over 15, which is equals to 1. Telling us that our last value should be equals to 1.